Hello and welcome back to our Lord of the Rings LCG solo progression series. And today's quest is the nightmare version of the Siege of Kyr Andros, which was the third and final scenario in the Heirs of Numenor Deluxe expansion. A quick reminder, in this series we're playing through each quest in chronological order of the game's initial release, and we'll only be using player cards that were available at the time of this quest release. I'm calling this deck Immovable Object, I think we can all agree that the Siege of Kyrondros is an unstoppable force, and so we need a pretty powerful deck uh, to uh, to do well. Uh, so whenever I first thought about building a deck and for the Nightmare version and playing it, because I never had before, uh, the original quest, of course, is very difficult and very swingy uh, with the stupid battering ram and the, and the banks. I hate it so much. but um, So I just thought this was going to be significantly more difficult I would say, in a way, maybe it's easier because the card pool has grown, and they got rid of the Power of Mordor, which was the ultimate swingy card, so definitely a, f a good fix. That was really annoying, the Power of Mordor, but the Battering Ram remains. Uh, but So because of the Battering Ram, I thought, well, let me do Legolas, and maybe I'll get lucky enough to put uh, Blade of Gondolin on him. I can travel round one to the banks destroy one enemy, and, and and then the battering ram can't possibly do anything to uh, the banks. And that works. It's fun when it happens. I had a deck that had Legolas, Baragond, and Boromir, all tactics. Uh, but I struggled um, to win consistently. I won a lot with it. I think, you know, 50-50, maybe a little bit worse than 50-50. I'm not sure, but uh, there were just some issues with... Um, getting the ball rolling. I didn't feel like I was powerful enough initially. And sometimes I would just take too much damage. So I was reliant on getting getting a faux hammer. Just was a little too inconsistent. And the most important part, of course, is you have to siege quest initially. Uh, so you have to build a deck around that. You can't use a hobbit deck or something like that. Uh, unless maybe you had your threat low enough and you just took a few rounds of hits while you set things up. I don't know, but um, I uh, finally thought, well, I decided the worst thing about the quest is just all the shadow card trains, I guess you would call, where a shadow card comes out and another one comes out and another one comes out. And then every, every shadow card that comes out, there's a, a greater chance there's going to be multiple attacks by enemies. So that's really the hardest thing. And so then I thought of Gandalf's staff and the fact that he can discard uh, a shadow card from a non-unique enemy. And he has, you know, a uh, defensive value that's pretty nice. And, and uh, he can uh, pair well with other tactics heroes and give us some off-sphere things. With, uh, so anyway, basically, when I started building the deck around the idea of Gandalf's staff, it really came together for me. And I really like this deck. It's fun. And there are a few cards that are new, no, no uh, allies that are new, but we've never used Healing Herbs. Uh, this is from Foundations of Stone. This just gives us a way to heal Gandalf if Master's Malice damages him, or even Baragon if he takes a few hits. We have Readying, uh, similar to the last time we used Gandalf with Breaking of the Fellowship. We need Readying effects. Um, so we've seen Miravor once before with, with Gandalf uh, last time we used him. But Flame of Honor is new. This is a neutral uh, event from the Road Darkens that we just haven't used yet. This just allows an Istari to ready. You discard a card off the top of your deck, and uh, that's the readying effect. And then it, whatever the value is of that card discarded, uh, you, you get to add that to uh, the Istari's attack value for the remainder of the phase. So um, it's kind of a one-time. It goes to the victory display. It's a one-time readying effect, but uh, really useful since we need readying. Um, everything else we've seen before, uh, we'll just go through the quest and see how we do it. could be a little, a little bit of a lengthy playthrough. All right, we'll look at our opening hand. Um, I mean, it's good that I have Defender of Ramas and that I have Gondorian Shield. So this is really good at Siege Questing, but I think my priority is always going to be Gandalf Staff. So I'm going to hard mulligan and try to get Gandalf Staff, and I didn't. But hey, at least I've got a Wing Guardian and a Feint, so not bad. I also have Wizard Pipe, so I might can, you know, use that to get to Wizard Staff sooner. All right, here is the setup for the Nightmare version of the Siege of Chirondros. We remove the following cards in the following quantities, 
and shuffle in the nightmare cards. Of note, definitely the removal of the power of Mordor. That's a good thing. Okay, there's not really a change here with the nightmare. It says until the end of the game, player cards in the victory display do not contribute their victory points. Uh, not really anything that affects me. Uh, there might be a way in solo where you could take advantage of this, but um, in solo, I don't really think I'd want to, to purposely travel to stages two, three, and four. Um, and so uh, maybe there's a way where that would be beneficial. So getting rid of these is going to be the priority to me anyway. And so we'll have the victory points we need to do battle quests. I'm not really sure that uh, this is very nightmarish, to be honest. Okay, so the defense says the island fortress of Kyr Andros, which guards Gondor's northernmost causeways over the river Anduin, is under siege. Battering rams rumble up the eastern causeway, and rafts filled with orcs float across the river toward the lightly defended northern banks. Let me just show you how many enemies are in this deck. So you've got treacheries, uh, you know, not very many. You can actually see all the art. It's not like really stacked on it. You know, it's not as many as we're used to seeing. Locations, very few locations. And then enemies, boom. I mean, just tons and tons of enemies with nasty shadow effects. Okay, for setup, we add the approach, the citadel, and the banks to the staging area. So here they are. They're called battleground locations. In the original quest, they were the only three battleground locations, but Nightmare has added a few uh, locations that have the battleground keyword. And so uh, they sort of are stair steps. You've got one threat, two threat, three threat. You've got three progress, seven progress, eight pro 11 progress. So they get uh, increasingly uh, larger valued. Uh, and this one, the banks, when you explore it, it says response, after the banks leaves play as an explored location, remove stage two from the quest deck of Abel. This one removes stage three. This one removes stage four. You have to explore them with progress to, to do that. Let's look at the quest deck. So there's five stages. What we want to do is, is stay here, you know, and deal with these locations and get rid of these stages so that as soon as we progress, we go to stage five. And uh, just that's where we, that's the approach we've got to take because our threat's starting off at 36. Um, but we do have, hopefully we'll be able to play at least one Galathrim Screeting. Sometimes I've played a few games where I played two and I went longer. But uh, like if Moomat comes out, you might, you might be slowed down a little bit. Uh, but now there's damage that can be done to these locations. It says that the banks has three or more damage, which the enemy, the, the enemies and different treacheries and things put damage shadow effects put damage on these locations and so the, once the banks has three or more damage remove it from the game you don't get the victory points you don't get to remove the stage and this is the real if i can get the banks in the victory display i'm generally going to win um, the approach and the citadel so the banks is what we have to really be strategic with how do we get to it sometimes i'll travel here first Sometimes I'll travel to the banks first. It just sort of depends. Uh, so that's it about the battleground locations. Side B, it says the assault is relentless and the defenders grow weary. The tide is slowly but surely turning against you. We are in siege questing, so characters are using uh, defensive values instead of willpower. Let's go to siege quest. Any undefended uh, attacks, we have to deal damage from an undefended attacks to the lowest threat battleground location in play. So if I had eight undefended damage, well, the banks is out of here, or just even three. So no undefended attacks allowed, really. And I'm grateful, you know, with all the attack cancellation and with Gandalf's staff, hopefully we won't have to. Um, we got to get some radian on Baragond ASVP. If there are no battleground locations in play, immediately advance to the next stage. So I don't necessarily have to clear the nine progress. I just have to see that no battleground locations are in play, whether they're removed by damage or by exploration. Let's remind ourselves about Gandalf. You play with the top card of your deck face up at all times. Once per phase, you may play the top card of your deck as if it was in your hand. So our hand is really not seven, it's gonna be eight with Gandalf. When playing a card this way, Gandalf is considered to have the printed leadership lore, tactics, and spirit 
icon. So that's how we're able to pay for things out of Sphere. So the top card is Gandalf Staff. Sweet. All right, we got lucky there. So resource phase, and we've drawn the most important card, I think, in the deck. And this is fun. Uh, healing Herbs is face up. Okay, we're in planning. And so this is a good demonstration of how great Gandalf is in tactics. He's great because he just gives you a nice card draw. Play with the top card of your face of your deck face up once per phase. You may play the top card of your deck as if it was in your hand. So we'll pretend this is in our hand. We get to play this card when playing it. Gandalf is considered to have all the resource icons, so he can pay for a zero cost card. He's not using his resources and converting them. He has the printed lore resource icon and this says attached to a lore hero well at this point since i'm playing this he's considered lore so this is going to be uh during planning i can play this as if it's my hand and attachment has to be played during the planning phase so it costs me nothing to just go ahead and put that on ganoff he's the target really for this he has to be nobody else has lore and now he's lost the lore leadership resource icon but he had it at the moment he played healing herbs Okay, so now we turn this card face up, and it is the Galatherum Screeting. Okay, so that was free to, to do that, and we drew a card in essence. All right, the first thing we're going to do for sure is go ahead and play Gandalf's Staff and attach it to Gandalf. And it gives us the ability to either, we exhaust it, and you either draw a card, add a resource to a hero's resource pool, or discard a shadow card from a non-unique enemy. Now, I have one resource left. I could put out Wing Guardian, but I think I'd rather just hang on to Faint, just in case an enemy comes out. So I'm going to hang on to this. Um, of course, if if an enemy comes out and I'm going to Faint it anyway, it doesn't really matter what enemy it is, then maybe I, I can go ahead and exhaust Gandalf Staff and gain a resource, um, or draw a card. Um, I could use Gandalf Staff to put a resource on Baragon, and thus we could play Winged Guardian, but I need to be able to play, I believe, uh, the, the Feint. But I'll wait, because I there's not really an advantage right now to draw on a card, or there's not an advantage to getting a resource other than, uh, I suppose, playing Wizard's Pipe. But um, it's not really valuable at this point. I think I've got more ability to make some... Uh, to to. To, to make some more informed decisions. What I could do is go ahead and play Knights of the Swan, have him out. That might help. There are some enemies that have six combined health and defense. Let's do that. And then if I need to, I can exhaust Gandalf Staff and give the resource to Baragon. So let's put out Knights of the Swan. And it says each Outland's character you control gets plus one attack. Okay, so I'm going to quest with Baragon and with Gandalf. Now remember, we're in siege questing, so that's a total of seven um, willpower. And we reveal an enemy, Orc Ravager. Okay. We were unsuccessful in the quest, which isn't uncommon the first time around, and our threat goes up by two. Okay, so here we'll travel. This is At this point, there's no damage on the banks. I don't want to dilly-dally. I want to try to get it gone next round. So we're going to travel to the banks, and here comes Orc Ravager. And it, he gets a shadow card. It says, Force, when Orc Ravager is dealt a shadow card, it gets plus two defense until the end of the phase. And so he's got a shadow card. And so he's going to be a combined health and defense of seven. So we're just out of range. We can't quite uh, destroy him. Uh, what I will do here is I think I'm going to save my feint. All I'm going to do, I think, is just go ahead and use Gandalf Staff for discarding this. So here we go. It's going to say, action, exhaust Ganoff Staff to choose an option. We're going to discard a shadow card from a non-unique enemy. We'll discard it from the Orc Ravenger. Let's see what it was. No effect. But a lot of them say he makes an immediate, an immediate attack after this. Now I attack for five and six. Well, actually, no. He's got, a, he's got attack. So we, we didn't cancel his attack. He's just attacking for three against Bayorn. That's just two damage on him. Now Bayorn and Knights of the Swan attack and destroy Orc Ravager. I put out Knights of the Swan because there is specifically uh, like a Haradrim Archer or something like that. And it's got a combined health and defense of six. Didn't work out. Uh, wait, he wasn't destroyed. Whoops. He had seven defense. And so that's six against uh, three. That's going to be three damage on him. 
Okay, we will uh, refresh and move on to the next round. Okay, um, I would love to be able to play Unexpected Courage, which I could do if I put out Wizard Pipe. Uh, thinking about that. There's so many options with this one. Uh, but I, th I think the priority is getting Wing Guardian out. We've got to get rid of the banks, so we don't want to mess around. Let's go ahead and do the banks here. Uh, get rid of the banks. And I'm going to hang on to Gandalf's staff. It'll give me more options, I think. I can draw a card or, or whatever later on. Okay, so we're going to quest with as much uh, willpower as we can here, which is six. We do want to try to clear the banks. Let's see what we get. It better not be the stupid battering ram. It's not. It's Haradrim Elite. Force, when Haradrim Elite enters play, it makes an immediate attack from the staging area against the first player. Now this says here, players must deal damage from the undefended attacks uh, to the lowest um, threat battleground location in play. So I can't take this undefended or else the banks will leave play and, and we don't want that. So we do not want undefended. Um, thinking through my options here. Uh, I mean, my options are to either defend with with Bayhorn or to chump with Knights of the Swan. And I think I'm going to, let me see, four plus one. I'll go ahead and defend here. Now, uh, he, cause he's, he's got a lot of life left. And so there could be a little bit of a, uh, a chain reaction where multiple, uh, shadow effects come out, but let's just see what we get. Okay. There was no effect. So I'm getting kind of lucky there. Four against one is three damage on Bayorn. He does not have to exhaust to defend. And we made three progress and cleared the banks. That goes to the victory display. Response after the banks leaves play as an explored location. Remove stage two from the quest deck if able. That goes to the victory display and we just delete this. Stage two is gone. That's good news. We'll travel to the approach. And during the encounter phase... Haradrim Elite engages us, and uh, that defensive boost went away. All right, so shadows are dealt, and the Orc Ravager boosts itself by plus two because it got a shadow card. Um, what we'll do here is go ahead and use... Uh, maybe it might be good to, you want to be so careful. Uh, we, we definitely want to discard one of these, uh, for sure. So let's go ahead and discard cause this guy gets impossible to defeat. The more shadows he gets, let's use Gandalf's staff. This is a non-unique enemy. We're going to discard this effect. It says attacking enemy gets plus one, deal it another shadow card. So you could see that it would just be plus four eventually. So that, that's gone. So now this guy... I don't have a way to get a, uh, I can't play faint, basically. Now what I could try to do, one, two, three. What I could try to do if I'm worried about his extra attack is I, I could play um, right now Flame of Arnor, or Honor, sorry. And that would ready Gandalf. It would discard this card. He'd attack for four, which would destroy Orc Ravager. I'm going to try that. I'm going to use Gandalf's resource to pay for Flame of Honor. And I'm hoping that maybe a wizard's voice is on top of the deck when we're done. So I just paid for Flame of Honor. Action. Add Flame of Honor to the victory display and discard the top card of your deck to ready an Istari character you control. So uh, I'm going to discard this wing, a vassal of the wind lord. Gandalf is ready. It says that uh, the character gets plus X attack until the end of the phase, where X is the discarded card's cost. So Gandalf's going to be attacking for four. The face-up card is not Wizard's Voice. I was hoping it was, because then I could just cancel Haradrim Elite and uh, 
as it is, we're just going to have to take an attack here. And I'm just hoping it's not one of the really nasty ones, na nasty shadow effects. Okay, so four against one. Deal two damage to the Citadel if it is in play. It is, so not bad. So that's four damage against one defense. That's three damage on Bayorn. So we got to be careful with him for sure. Okay, but now Ganoff's ready. And he's attacking for four because he was boosted by... Oh, I needed to add this to the victory display. Yep, it's in the victory display now. So he was boosted by one. He's attacking for four. Four against three means that he puts one damage on Orc Ravenger. He's destroyed. And then five and six destroys Haradrim Elite. So far so good. You can see how difficult this quest can be. Uh, again, our staff is so versatile, man. It's so great. Okay, we'll refresh and move on to round three. Face-up card is Knights of the Swan. All right, so, you know, once per phase, we can play cards that are on top of the deck. Uh, I don't mind having some attack out here, so let's go ahead and spend a resource to pay for this Knights of the Swan. Now, you don't have to use Gandalf's resources. It's just that he allows us to play this card as if it's in our hand. And uh, so I used a, uh, one of Baragon's uh, resources to play Knights of the Swan. Each Hallow's character you control gets plus one attack. So they're at plus two each. That's just going to be helpful for counterattacks and even maybe jumping if we needed to. Uh, still have this feint. I want to hang on to this resource to play at this time. If an enemy comes out, I want to cancel that attack. Um, so what I'm going to do here is go ahead and use Gandalf's staff. No, I'm not going to do this. I was hoping to maybe play Unexpected Courage, but I, but I can't because I can't switch it. Uh, so we'll just, we'll keep this there. You know, this guy surges. You never know. There could be two enemies, so I'm going to leave it ready. I can always change my mind later or change directions. Uh... So now that we have these two Knights of the Swan, we're not as worried about Ganoff being exhausted. Okay, we reveal uh, Southron Mounted Archer has Archery 5. It says damage from each round's archery total may be assigned to battleground locations as well as characters. Now that's optional and you can mix and match. It's kind of, kind of cool. So 5 progress made on the, uh, the approach. So we're doing well. And we're, we'll optionally engage this guy, Southron uh, Mounted Archer. He, uh, now at the beginning of combat before getting shadows, that's where you do archery damage. And what I'm going to do is just go one, two, three, four, five. We have a lot of wiggle room here with damage. He just did his five archery damage. It says damage from each round's archery total may be assigned to battleground locations as well as characters. So... Uh, kind of uh, player friendly, I think that we have some options there. All right, so Southron uh, Mounted Archer is going to attack. We're just going to play Faint and cancel his attack, and just let's just see what the shadow was. Deal two damage to the Citadel. So far, we haven't seen any of the ones that say make extra attacks, but they're in they're in the deck. Let's go five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know, we destroyed him. No problem. He's destroyed. Let's remember to use Gandalf's staff. And I think I want to do some card draw here more than resources. Let's use his staff to draw a card. Face-up card is Shadow of the Past. Um, now, I don't want uh, Orc Scramblers to be uh, what put back on top of the deck, so we're not going to use that, unfortunately. I might could have put the uh, Haradrim Archer, the Southron Mounted Archer on top. You can discard in any order. Uh... I don't know if that's, I don't think that's cheating. You know, we, we, uh, defeated him. Yeah, I guess it is cheating because I made the decision. Uh, whatever. I'll just keep it. I'm, I just like, I love the South Run Mounted Archer, so I'll just keep this for later. Okay. We will refresh and next round. So why I was really wanting to play it is because if I, I can play this during any action window, not just planning. And so it's just, in a sense, if Gandalf can do that, it's card draw, right? Oh, wow, a lot of attack here. If I get the third Knights of the Swan out, I don't think I've ever done that. 
uh, might as well do it, I think. Let's use Baragon's resource to put out this Knights of the Swan. So we have nine attack right here. That's crazy. Face-up card now is Miravor, but we've done our once per phase playing off the top of our uh, deck. Um, let's go ahead and spend a resource from Bayorn's pool to attach Wizard Pipe to Gandalf. This can be attached to an Istari character, limit one per character. All right. And so we're going to quest with our usual suspects. Actually, I'm going to leave Baragon ready. Uh, Bayorn's not really in a place where he can... Uh, yeah, we'll do it that way. I'd rather... Of course, I can always jump if I need to, like if the uh, big eight attack enemy comes out, but I'd like... Baragon ready to potentially defend. Actually, we'll defend with Gandalf if we're in a pinch. Okay, so we reveal Siege Raft. When revealed, deal two damage to the lowest threat battleground location in play if able. That would be the approach. So we're at four damage. Uh, if we get seven, we lose out on this. Okay, we made two progress. Oh, we just cleared it anyway. Goes to the victory display, and we now go to the quest deck, and we get rid of stage three. We'll travel to the Citadel, and here comes Siege Raft. And he attacks for four, and uh, what we'll do here is just defend with, with uh, Gandalf. But what I'm going to do is, before I do, actually, I'm going to use Gandalf's staff, to discard this shadow effect. No shadow effect, wow. But a lot of times they do have them. So four against three is one damage on, on Gandalf. And we'll go five and nine and easily destroy uh, Siege Raft. Now I have a wizard pipe. What was the shadow? I should have looked. Yeah, I don't really want either of these things to come out. I don't know, Siege Raft's not really that bad. Deal two damage. Let's just do that. Let's uh, Siege Raft's on top. And so I'm here in the combat phase. I could go ahead and uh, let's do this. I'll use Wizard Pipe to switch this out. This is now on top of the deck. And then I'm going to use these two resources to pay for Shadow of the Past. Action, move the top card of the encounter discard pile to the top of the encounter deck. And uh, that we just know what's coming that way. It's not so bad. Four attacks, really nothing compared to what could come out. And the Citadel can take the damage. All right, refresh. Uh, top card is Gondorian Shield, cool. All right, so we are in a resource phase. You know, you, you need to always think about Wizard Pipe. Is there a way that you could play a card in your hand by switching it, uh, like an action, like maybe eagles are coming or something like that. But uh, we don't really have anything like that here because we can't quite play Galathrim Screeding. Not too worried about it. We're at 42 threat. We're fine. Okay, we're in planning. Uh, let's go ahead and use Wizard Pipe to switch out Faint with Gondorian Shield. And so once per phase, I can play the card off the top of the deck. It's going to be Gondorian Shield, which I played for free. Uh, it costs one, but Baragon says lower the cost to play weapon and armor attachments on Baragon by two. So this gives him plus two defense. So he's doing great there. Uh, top card now is Wizard's Voice. Good. So I can just use Wizard's Voice on Siege Raft. Meaning that I don't have to worry about Gandalf's staff this round. Okay, so we'll see. I might do something with Gandalf's staff later. Yeah, we'll make, let's see, 13 minus 3. 
yeah, that's the best we can do. Okay, we reveal a Siege Wrath. When revealed, deal two damage to the lowest threat battleground location in play, if able. That's two damage on the Citadel. We made 10 progress. Didn't quite clear it, but that's okay. I don't mind taking a little time and setting things up before I advance. We're in the driver's seat. Here comes Siege Raft. It gets a shadow card, and I'm going to play uh, Wizard's Voice from the top. We're in the combat phase. I'm going to play Wizard's Voice Doom 3. We're at 45 threat now. Each player chooses one enemy engaged with him until the end of the phase. Each chosen enemy cannot attack the player that chose it. Face up card is now Gandalf's staff. So we canceled his attack and we attack back. And the shadow card was, look, deal the attacking enemy two additional shadow cards. Things can get out of hand quick. Uh, we want to play Galadrim Screeding, I think. So let's go ahead and use uh, Gandalf's staff to give Gandalf a resource. Refresh. And next round. Uh, I have faints, so uh, basically I don't like things right now that say doomed. If this guy comes out, why not? You know, he only contributes to threat, and it's not a location. I can clear this. I can use faint on him, but if we advance... As soon as this is cleared, we're going to advance, and it's going to surge, and so there'll be two enemies. He is a pretty tough enemy. I don't know if I want to bring him out, but so I'm thinking I could do this, but uh, I think it's a priority actually to play uh, Galadrim Screening. So we're in the resource phase, right? We've not gone to planning, so I'm going to use this uh, Wizard Pipe to switch this out. With Galadrim Screeting, now this is the face-up card. And during the resource phase, I can play, once per phase, I can do this. I'm going to play the top card of the deck. And uh, Gandalf is considered to have a spirit resource icon. So we go down to 40 threat. And that way, Doom isn't a problem and stuff. The new face-up card is Vassal of the Windlord. Um... I want to hang on to this and faint because this is we're about to advance and it's just going to be nice to have some control, I think. I could go ahead and play Eagles of the Misty Mountains. But again, I might have two enemies and so I'd rather have a little bit more versatility. Let's quest... And I'm going to take my time. Uh, all I need is one progress. If I don't get it, it won't really bother me. I've still got quite a bit of room here. Of course, if there was any damage put on the Citadel and then the battering ram came out, I'd I'd miss out. But stage, what does stage four do? Yeah, it's siege question. I don't really care. If I go to stage four, it's not a problem. So yeah, I don't really care too much. It's only really the banks you've got to get out of there. So we'll just quest. We're going to leave everybody else ready just in case when we go to stage five and there's just a mega problem. Like maybe there's one of those enemies that comes out that surges. I want to have as many characters ready as possible. So I'm not spending my leadership or my uh, tactics resources yet. Okay, we reveal Southron support, Doom 3. So that's why we played um, Galathrum's Greeting. When revealed, each player must search the encounter deck and discard pile for one Harad enemy and add it to the staging area, if able. Shuffle the encounter deck. It says one Harad enemy from either the encounter deck or discard pile. Let's just look here in the encounter deck. And I'll search for HAR. So I have a choice here. Three Either one of these, that they're three threat, I'll make the progress I need to clear the Citadel. So that means uh, an, an immediate attack, but Baragon can take that. I can't really cancel it with Feint, that's a combat action. So uh, 
but he could suddenly start making lots of attacks. Let's just not do that. The immediate attack is not what I want. So let's go ahead and put this guy out. Southron, Mounted Archer. We'll shuffle the deck. And we made one progress and cleared the Citadel. Goes to the victory display because it has 11 progress on it, of course. And now we remove stage four from the quest deck. And we've made no progress on the defense, but it says... If there are no battleground locations in play, immediately advance to the next stage. So here we are, the last battle. The defenders of Kyra Andros have survived brunt upon brunt of the enemy's assault, but the outcome of the battle hangs on the edge of a knife. One last heroic effort is required to save the fortress and win the victory. We are in siege questing now, but actually we're not, and you'll see why. Winterveld, reveal one card per player from the encounter deck and add it to the staging area. And that card's going to be or Gravel. Not so bad. If the players have collected four or more victory points, the last battle gains battle and loses Siege. Let's look at our victory display. And it's, this says you can't uh, count player cards towards that victory uh, total. So this one doesn't count. But there's one, two, three, uh, four, uh, four, five, six. All right. So we've collected four. So if you somehow don't get the Citadel, you can't have had uh, four. So we've collected four victory points, which puts us in battle questing. Uh, if the players defeat the stage, they've won the game. Now we're to travel during the encounter phase. Uh, we want to optionally engage Southron Mounted Archer, and then this guy's going to make an engagement check. At the beginning of combat, we have five archery to spread around. Let's go, and we don't have a location to put it on, so one, two, three, uh, four, five. Yeah, because I'm not blocking with Bayorn anymore. He's gonna be blocking uh, potentially, so uh, this seems good. Okay, so Shadow Cards dealt this particular guy, Orc Rabble, Force when Orc Rabble, and it's a lot of them. These older, for some reason in Heirs of Numenor, they had enemies that represented like groups of enemies. It's kind of cool. Force, when Orc Rabble is dealt a Shadow Card, he gets plus two attack until the end of the phase. Okay, so this is why I wanted to make sure uh, that what I'll do here is I'll just use Gandalf's Staff to discard, we'll just say uh, this one. He's a non-unique enemy. And so it says exhaust a character you control, deal an enemy and the enemy another shadow card. It's just so tough. Man, get off staff so cool. And now this guy will just cancel that attack with faint. And now we just need to figure out a way to attack for a six, which we have plenty of attack here. So these two Knights of the Swan can destroy Southron Mounted Archer. And let's just think about, we have Shadow of the Past, so let's think about how we discard things. Uh, now this guy, just we have to attack for four, so just uh, Bayorn can destroy him. Let's look at what we have here. All right, so we want him on top. So he is discarded, and uh, we'll be sure to uh, put him on top of the encounter deck. He's a good card to reveal. All right, so I have an action window here. I might as well use Healing Herbs. Action, discard Healing Herbs and exhaust Attached Hero to heal all damage on one character. I'm going to exhaust this, or discard this, sorry, and exhaust the Attached Character to heal all damage on one character. You can't heal Bayorn because he's uh, immune to player card effects, but that's why I loaded up Gandalf. He's healed now. Very cool. All right, we'll refresh next, and I think final round. I think this is it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do really well here. Okay, final round. Uh, we know what's coming out. It's this guy. It's just to, wait, we, oh, no, we don't know that. We, we, just, we, we haven't moved him over yet. All right. So definitely want to play Vassal the Windlord. And... Um, let's use Gandalf's staff to put a resource on Gandalf. 
and he will play Shadow of the Past. Action, move the top card of the encounter discard pile to the top of the encounter deck. All right. We have four resources left, which is just enough for us to put out an Eagles of the Misty Mountains. And we're going to quest. We're in battle questing here, so we're sending everybody. We'll just leave Wing Guardian back. We reveal Orc Rabble, and we made 21 progress. And won the game. It says if the players defeat the stage, they have won the game. So that went really well. Um, usually I win this in seven rounds. I think I've gone as many as 11 when I've won. I've never had all three Knights of the Swans, so that was really fun blowing away the last quest. Um, usually it takes me a couple of rounds to quest past. But uh, yeah, I mean, you can just see just how amazing Gandalf Staff works in this quest. Uh, and you can't play everything. You just have to be really... What I like about Gandalf Staff is maybe we could choose to draw cards. Um, you know, but uh, we just look at our deck and talk about a few things maybe we didn't see. We understand all the uh, allies, I believe. You know, Eagles of the Misty Mountains can soak up any... Uh, on round, uh, stage five, you can use uh, Vassals of the Windlord for chumping, and Eagles gets boosted by that. Sometimes I use Knights of the Swan in, the, in round one for chumping or just for helping Bayorn to get, you know, one of those archers. Uh... We saw Healing Herbs, you know, Miravore is just readying that we desperately need. We never put out an Unexpected Courage. I usually put the first Unexpected Courage on Baragond because Gandalf has uh, the ability to use Flame of Honor if needed. But it just sort of depends on what's going on. The only thing we didn't see that I wish we had is Eagles are coming. So it's really fun when this one's face up. It's just neat to play it uh, off the top of your deck. It costs nothing to do it. And sometimes you draw eagles. If you ever have it in your hand, you know, don't use it until you, you see an eagle face up. Then you know that you're going to at least draw one eagle. But I think other, otherwise we saw everything, including healing herbs, how that works. Uh, let's look at the quest, the, uh, the encounter deck. Well, what was there worth mentioning? Anything? Uh, so... While Orc Vanguard is in the staging area, resources cannot be spent from the resource pools of heroes who have non-tactics resource icons. And so you'd have to be careful. If he's in staging, Ganoff can't use his uh, ability to switch. You know what I mean? Uh, he, he's neutral, but he would have that uh, if you try to play something off the top of your deck, and then he wouldn't be able to. So that's worth mentioning. Uh, let's look at the deck. Uh, there's battering ram doom two, And, you know, if that comes out on the second round and you travel straight to uh, the banks and that comes out, it just <laughs> ruins your day. I hate it so much, but there's, a, it's very unlikely. There's three of them in the deck and it's a huge deck. Lots of different enemies that aren't battering ram. I mean, I don't even mind the, the siege raft deal two damage to the location, but battering ram is just really tough. And I think last time I played, I made a mistake where, at the end, uh, I think uh, I attacked him with um, Blade of Gondolin, and I just assumed that this was an orc. Well, it's not. It's a battering ram. It's not, uh, there's an orc pushing it. but So I gave myself, I think, a boost of one attack, assuming that was an orc. So that was a mistake somebody pointed out. This guy's not so bad. Damage dealt by orc saboteurs attacks must be assigned to a battleground location in play. Well, if that's at 11... Uh, uh, if there's that, that 11 uh, progress, 11 damage location, the Citadel, you can just put that um, damage, like instead of on Bayorn, I love it when Bayorn defends against this guy, and I can just put the damage on a battleground. It's not so bad. Uh, Mumak is, again, if it comes out, it's just annoying more than anything. There's one unique character. Actually, no, he's not. Lieutenant of Mordor. I assumed he was unique. All this time I've been thinking he was. I never really noticed uh, he doesn't have a unique... Uh, icon. He is a lieutenant, but there must be multiple lieutenants of Mordor. So no unique enemies. Pretty So we, the, that means Gandalf's staff is really good in this quest. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. I love that quest and I really enjoyed this deck and I don't usually start at such a high threat. Really different. And, you know, I'm continuing as we move along, trying to get outside the box a little bit and, and use the expanding car, uh, player card pool. So it's fun to do some new things. Well, as always, hope you enjoyed it, and I thank you for joining me. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.